on the opponent's pick. Astralis with one smoke, HE flashes, and uh, no P250. So it's uh, maybe an upper execution there, getting ready to nade off the door. Zipex and a Molotov going in towards the upper bomb set as well. You'd assume on top of hearts. Okay, well, a little bit of a step throw on that one. Want to make sure it lands and it will spilling over towards Tetris and they're in. The flash is good, but the shot is better. Dex has got one traded up by Config, but Exertion not clear behind the vent. They know where he is now. They need to deal with him because the rotation coming thick and fast. Everybody from Mao's responding to this. It's just Farley going to be the last man standing as Zip takes the trundle down the vent. Farley, he was good last, but he's going to get anything done this time round. And a nice pistol there from Mao's. Responsive work on the CT side. They'll get themselves up to a 1-0 lead. Yeah, nothing too flashy there from Astralis. Didn't uh, show any presence towards outside of ramp. Got the lobby control. Basic execution towards Appa. The Molotov doesn't find anyone on top of the hut. And then just back and forth we went. But uh, the lion's share of the frags going in favor of Mouse Sports. Very comfortable. No bomb plan. And we will have an eco here from Astralis. Just a couple of deagles. No utility, no armor. And you can see them preparing on the Mouse Sports side. Five rifles, Chad. That's difficult to bring that out. Yeah, I guess one of the bigger issues can be if they lose a couple of these to some deagles, right? There will have to be reinvestments from everybody that's gone down, maybe a drop or two. So th that is the danger if, zone. If they can keep it clean, though, they're in very good stead uh, for the next gun round here. So we'll see what they can make of it. They've got helmets across the board. And 401S and a uh, FAMAS. So very defensive, not giving anything away here. Understandably so. It's just about avoiding config and blame for the majority of this. Now, config's deagle will fire off the warning shot that it is in play. Toji... Slinked into something a little bit more passive here. So rush for Maus. The fight has to come to them as Harley continues to spam that Glock over towards Squeaky. Don't know if he wants to produce a hole or not. Or if he just wants to be a pain in the ass. But either way, we're in a minute on the mark and Maus get to overstep exactly that. Or she has to be very careful. Very careful. Very right. One of those shots could be absolutely brutal. We talked about the ramp mentality before. Don't overstay your welcome. Fall back when you have to, but uh, very clean and controlled so far from JDC. He'll send two Astralis players packing and uh, a bit of damage towards Blame F as well, but that's the shot Chad was talking about. Got to be careful. One of the rifles removed now. Another kill would be fantastic here. And not going to come in. It's now just Farley with the picked up. Oh, hello. Well, that's the hole. And uh, Farley kind of victim of his own little... It's a plan Design right there. Which is unlikely. Not happening. Three, two, one, dead. Perfect work for JDC. Great round from him. Stood his uh, round over towards ramp. Gets the final frag. And it is the 2-0 start. So now for Blame and Config. They can get out AKs, but they will be light on in the util department. So Glaive's going to have a harder time calling here. What is the opener they want to look for? It has to be something that is either a little bit slower, right? Allow the CT protocol utility to come through or maybe something that's a bit more all-in as a unit and try and trade out. But we're in the third round of play and everybody has a big gun in their hand. So this is nice to see. Love the big guns. And uh, the game really starts here. Astralis with basic utility. Probing towards outside. Setting up the smokes as well. We'll have Zipex patrolling any potential aggressing CTs where they have the grenades out. It's going to be Glaive though, making first contact. Clearing out those close corners, making sure no one's snuck behind. Good smokes now, Frozen will have a lot of vision taken away now. Does he want to push forward? And indeed he does. Flashbang from his teammate. Completely blind. Config comes out on top. That's unfortunate. It was a nice maneuver there. Didn't mind it at all. And Config gets a face full of the HE. And does he go down? One more shot. Oh, oh the reload. Oh dear, there's four bullets. Torji had him dead to Ryan's right shot. there. So not only do they not get the kill, they know where he is. They will keep at least a couple of members trying to task with dealing with Config's position, but the next fight is going to be Glaive, who's already past them. He's already down and past them here. They're clearing the wrong side. Glaive's already so deep within the site here. They're going to run into an absolute car crash. Dexter's waiting, and now this is where Glaive will have to activate. They should wait now, right? They don't have to do anything until Glaive comes back through the backtracks and presumably takes him down, but Config's been dropped as well. This is turning into a bit of a nightmare now. Glaive makes himself known, but is it too little too late? Three versus two. 35 seconds remaining now, and Glaive will recover the bomb, but players all around him, Dexter heard all of that. Bent to top, it has up, to be yeah, I, think, play. I think you're right. It would make sense. He's going to skate on Glaive, and indeed makes his way up. The noise on the ladder here. Dexter's yeah. going to hear this. Where does he think Dexter's gotten to? He has to be down towards the lower side of things, if not main, and he's going to plan open to main here, so Dexter sniffed this one out, sure. Number advantage is in play, but it's Glaive and Blame for the clutch. This is an all-important frag, and it's the ding from JDC that will come out on top. Three versus one now. Glaive 
has looked pretty sharp today, but uh, has to go above and beyond if he stands a chance in this difficult scenario. Dexter, though, offers up a bit of a freebie, but Torshi, calm as you like, very precise in the M4, no chance for Glaive. You know those really ugly fish in the deep sea? I don't even know if they're real, but they have like a light on the end yes, of their head. Yes, I know exactly. That's what, what I think in-game leaders are these days. Right, okay. Like they're, they're the light. They're shining. They're not going to do anything. <laughs> uh, they're shining the light, and then as long as somebody trades, it's all good, right? So uh, offer yourself up, be the lure, and uh, get that round confirmed. It was a bit of an odd one here, and Config reacts instantaneously to that swing out. And this push, it was just a bit quizzical, right? Glaive had so much space towards lower that it wasn't considered at all that that was a possibility. So a good heads up move here from Maus, and Rio starters, it will be an AK and some upgraded pistols as we get underway. Flame's going to be taking that AK aggressively towards ramp within the early stages. Zershin is going to go for an extinguish early. And he's been spotted. See you later, Zip. There's no way through that one. Very well done. Well handled. Exertion might push them in towards the ramp, but JDC is waiting. Mistimes the incendiary there, not quite deep enough, but it might not matter. Next. Exertion gets another one <laughs> as they try and sneak down towards the vent. So they'll continue their attack towards ramp here, but uh, I don't think they'll be finding much luck. JDC more than happy to stay, but after being out positioned like that, he knows they've already snuck by. I thought he had dropped down, but sticking around for one more potentially. He's got a bit of backup coming in from CT Spawn. He needs to be careful. I think he might have outstayed his welcome there, Chad. With the advantage they had, a five on three, more than happy just to fall down towards lower, I'd say. You've actually given them an avenue of approach here. I think he was expecting a bit more backup than was being shown from be towards the elbow, but Zershin, they're running straight at you. Already passed, and it'll do nothing to flash. At least we'll buy him some space and move it towards the side. This is the AK on Blame. It's got the kill. He's got a one-on-two situation with plenty of time on the clock here. Blame can win a round like this. He wins these for sure. Um, he's got the bomb, an HE grenade, and he knows there's an orb towards double doors as well. Takes care of him, no problem. But good response from Frozen, like a hinge. He'll swing out and find the 4-0 for Mouseport. So uh, didn't quite get the AWP there, did he? No, he was running as fast as you like. Now, an AWP can be purchased up and dropped over, so it's not the end of the world. But you'd love in these early stages on the CT side to start consolidating a bit of those finances. Charlie will get out his big green on the attack. And Let's see if he's able to make an impact. He was fantastic on Inferno. He had good signs yesterday on Dust2 as well in a map lost to complexity. We would love to see him continue some of that form here today. Well, Ben. Next gun round available here for Astralis. Probing towards outside once again, but Torshi. Love these sort of maneuvers, changing things up, keeping things unpredictable. But the grenades landing at his front doorstep here. It takes considerable damage to kick things off. Down to 65, but still. He doesn't fall back, and it will be Farley with another impressive opening there. Five on four. Now, they've had these before. Frozen. He actually answers back, and now they're in a lot of trouble. How has he, he that? How has Comping missed that shot? Oh, I was about to say, this is something that Astralis did well yesterday versus Complexity. When Complexity were going for yard crunches aggressively, Astralis were dealing the dud hand the other way. And uh, fortunately, the trade will come through, and Frozen doesn't if, get out. If we could see that from Convict's POV, that would be great. I'd like to see whether he got some bad comms, if he was looking towards main, perhaps. But, I'll give uh, you the bad news. We definitely can't see that from Convict's okay, POV. Okay, we can't? No, no, fair no, enough. No, I guarantee you we cannot see that from his POV. Yeah, fair play. I thought, I thought I'd give it a go. That uh, exertion towards the squeaky door. Zipex will drop the bomb and things going from bad to worse for Astralis now. Going on to Blame F with Farley. They've actually got some sort of map control here towards heaven. He's undetected completely. That's a great shot. And now with the smoke down towards main, they might have a fighting chance here. Dexter and JDC remain. Still the Galil. Dexter tucks himself in by the squeaky door, waiting for that smoke to dissipate to get some more information. But Blame, he's on the hunt. Knows he needs to pick up the C4. I want to go towards top because he's been able to drop in, but they haven't accounted for Dexter, who might get both. The bomb scooped up by the AWP, and now steps are being made here over towards Ram. The communication, it's going to be there. The damage is done. They just have to hardtail it, and now it's going to be JDC to stall this out. He gets this frag. The bomb's loose, and blame. you got no time, no hope, no chance. Just save that AWP, my friend. That's all he can do. That's unfortunate. Good effort from Blame out there towards a heaven position. He snuck behind the enemy lines. Gets a big kill, but uh, time is of the essence, as we mentioned. Nice shot on the retreat. Uh, gets the AWP, as you mentioned, so that's something, at least. Can give it to Farley. We'll see whether they he can make good of it in the next round. They've got another opening frag there. Let's see if I'm a liar, uh, because I'm 99.9% .9 sure, but I would love to be pleasantly surprised. I am 99.9%. That seems quite high. I would no, but say that's maybe 60-40. I understand 
what's going on uh, in that room. So Fair enough, I don't. I, I have a very good idea of, uh, of, of why it's not possible. Thank God I wasn't wrong, because I went, I was, I just <laughs> flat out said, no, Henry, you can't have the toy. I'm it's sorry. Fair enough, I didn't know. We can't buy you Vegeta That's today. the last chance. That's the last chance that I try I'll have. I'm trying to uh, force that issue, but uh, they still have enough to buy, like you said, with the maximum loss bonus coming oh, in. And okay. an I'm pushed. It's uh, JDC that opens things up. That's an aggressive maneuver. Torsi to be challenged outside or spots at least one player, but the AWP is still there, remember, so Bali can bring this back, but uh, a great opening sequence. They had two MP9s into this round and still had the man advantage, but they can't hold on to it. Dexter offers himself up. It's one of the M4s removed. They'll probably try and pick that up. Exertion, though, <gasps> taken down. Lovely shot from Convict. That's such an all-in play as well, creeping through the smoke alone. It feels good to get one back after we saw what happened to Flame, and oh, it happens Ooh. again to Zip. He just didn't expect the linger, and we never do. It's going to be just two players remaining here. It's Config and Farley up against the world. Another mid-round situation with a number disadvantage. And they're always spread out in these scenarios here. They do have the space to work with. They've got the bomb. They have some time. But how are they meant to piece this one together? Um, well, Farley will have to find an opening pick. Buy some room for Config elsewhere on the map. He's down towards lower for now. Config will join him. Frozen, though, just needs one kill, and I would say the round is done. But uh, we'll see what he can make of it. Barley presumably goes towards the window room, scouts out the bomb site, and uh, we'll see what's available. But those windows are not broken, so he can't exactly sneak out. Time ticking away once again. We hit the 25-second mark, and they have a flashbang and a smoke. They can maybe open the double doors and plant, but you're going to get spammed down. As mentioned, have to shoot out the window if you want to gain any sort of access. Smoke's off the right-hand side of the ramp position. So there's the window shot. They've got 10 seconds to try and get this plant down. Config with an opportunity here, making things awkward at least, and that's a plan. That's a plan all day long. A huge kill, all things considered. If Farley will stay alive for a second longer, JDC through the smoke, he's going to at least pin down the position of Config in the back is turned. He's not ready for the swing out from the decon door, and even if he hit that shot, he was dead. So very well handled there. At least they got the plan down. It continues yep. their buying spree here. Maximum loss bonus plus $800 per player. So uh, they'll have a strong buy once more, but the rounds are spiraling out of control. I, I think the key is as well that Mao's have had so few players stay alive in, a, in a, like AKs into right. the next round, no matter what happens here. So this is a, a curious one. See how they're able to still buy what they've purchased. Serviceable buy to win a round here. You would assume more of an execution, like a set piece perhaps with this sort of setup. Send the tech nines in first, get the run and gunning going. While players are blind, that would make a lot of sense. Um, but for now, we enter round number seven. Astralis yet to post one. So here it is, the set piece. They have lost lobby control though. They haven't got in there at the start of the round. So Dex is taking advantage of that with the MP9. He's tucked in towards squeaky door. This is key because they're going to be calling off the utility here. Once it's thrown, they're not going to assume a player's oh. here, but that's lovely from Config. He does anticipate the position. Oh, they don't have to commit to this now. No, that's two huge kills. The, the top hit doesn't have to come through. There's so much time. They have the number advantage, but for how long? JDC towards ramp, he's been good, but Glaive just blindsides in there, creeps out, headshot through, and it might have to be the save for Exertion and Frozen here. How can you justify going for this when the finances are where they are? Well, that's what we needed to see. Some individual brilliance there. Config with the, the jump on the, towards bouncing his head towards the squeaky door position. Manages to get himself in a very awkward spot with the CTs there. Double kill comes through and uh, looks like four players should survive as well. We'll put one back for Exertion who recovers the AWP. Uh, Frozen will join him trying to save the weapon room. As you mentioned, Chad, even after winning six rounds in a row, look how low the cash is. Dexter, zero dollars. JDC, 650. A uh, thousand dollars for the players saving right now, so they only get fourteen hundred on top of this. So saving these weapons are absolutely crucial. We have to force buy around them, and uh, not with a whole lot. They can maybe drop a mass from exertion, an MP9 from frozen, perhaps, or they'll be equipped. But uh, their last chance to hold on to the finances and indeed their momentum. And that's the thing they should, right? They should be dropping into oh, the next tier yeah. because otherwise they're in uh, double eco territory, and that's not something that we see too often in modern day Counter Strike. Obviously the changes to the economy system and the change to the M4, et cetera, et cetera. It really changes these patterns, but it's good that they're aware of that. And the second one there, you can see Torji just trying to get out of the way. Like, please don't shoot me. And that's a great shot from Glaive as well. Sharp onto JDC. Team's here. And they played up close behind the red before, right? And he got naded and kind of thumped down early by some precision utility from Astralis, but they were still able to convert the round. Flame, he's been able to slip down. down the vent this time. So will anybody address that? I'm not sure they're aware of that. This happened yesterday with Floppy against Astralis. He was able to get down more often than not. And then in the later stages, they just had to park Zip down there watching the vent time and time again. He, I guess his issue is to get out of here, a door or a window needs to be broken. That's right. the biggest problem for Blame right now. He has the space, sure, but what do we do with it? 
one of the keys that I like seeing teams do is when they do the yard smokes and then they just do the secret cross because you know there can't be event rotation. So that's always an option and, and maybe the option that they That makes a lot of sense. Here. Yeah, here it is getting set up. Yeah, when you've got a player down towards vents, you can guarantee safe passage towards the lower bomb site. He can hold off the rotations and then look towards the ramp. So uh, yeah, it's a great call. No CT presence towards lower whatsoever. You can look at the top Take. left of your mini-map. Okay. It is. That's very interesting. Okay, so, so Blame is down here. I, I feel like he is going to have to be a little bit more active as part of this. The boost over towards ramp from JDC has the support of Torji here, and they're creeping in this direction. Still no movement from Blame. Absolutely nothing. So Torji just wants to take all of this aggro, hopefully get a kill, fade away, and set up JDC. Seconds. It's 35 seconds. Well, this is where they overlook angles then, Chad. They might not be looking up here at all. He hasn't tucked himself away. He's standing up as well, so they even... Oh, dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear. They didn't check it at all. Uh, that's going to be a little bit sloppy from Astralis and fortunately make up for it. So down towards lower they go. Farley should be able to take care of Dexter. So a bit of a lifeline there. A round potentially could have fallen apart very quickly, but they will be finding their second frozen with no real chance to do anything with this one. But that was scary. I, I guess they had no idea that Blaine was down the vent, but after the yard smokes, they should have had some idea that somebody could have gotten into that type of a position, right? Oh. So uh, it was good safety net positions for Astralis across the map. Farley was the, the latest, but Blame also towards the vent, and, and Zip's trade was key, right? His trade was very... And those are his first two kills right, right. now. So the fact that he's been able to stop the dry spell is going to put Astralis here up to two rounds and Mal's down to an eco with one save down four. So fantastic stuff from Astralis here. Didn't start as early as it did yesterday with the domination, but there's still plenty of time to pick up the slack. Yeah, this stage looking for four or five rounds would be ideal. Five or six would be perfect. We'll see what they can make of it. A slow start for sure. Now sports though, starting to fade away. The boost was very well done, all things considered. Them not checking it was a problem. The blame authority in the vent stopped the rotations and Farley there to stop the hub push. So that should be it. The last of the now sports gold. $2,000 per player, $1,900 loss bonus, and they have saved an M4 for Frozen, but that's about it. This is remarkable. I've just gone and had a look yesterday at that new game, right? We, we had uh, 25 rounds by Complexity and 23 rounds won by Astralis, right? So we were in a triple OT game, everybody. That's just what I wanted to point out and highlight there. But as far as the opening kill department went, Astralis dominated them. 32 opening kills to 16, and they still lost the wow. map. And yeah. just reflecting, we, we both, yeah, I've been saying this too. It was a 9-6 first half for Astralis. So okay, still a very good, still a very good first half overall. Yeah. Nine T rounds is a lot. If they, they can still get nine now, sure. but that would be such a massive comeback. It'd be nine consecutive. I still can't believe that opening kill set, 32 to 16, and they lost the map. Yeah, that, that's really crazy, actually. That's just for basic maths. That's double everybody playing at home. Playmath looking to double up here, gets his second frag of the round. And uh, hasn't found the all-important one yet. It's frozen with the M4, holding tight towards the upper bomb side. But they've got a five versus three. And uh, for now, just holding positions. They've got uh, the whole map surrounded. Players towards ramp, outside, lobby. And they're heading towards ramp here. The timings could elude them. The config's watching the flanks, though. Doesn't get the double kill, but it confirms the position of the rifle. They can guarantee the lowers should be clear at this point. They'll be aware of the rotations towards the vent, but smoking up the doors here shouldn't be a problem. Molotov towards double, and the smokes at single will guarantee the C4 going down. Now, there's not going to be an AWP available in the next round of play either, unless Farley gives it over, and I'm sure they'd want to be protecting that. That's a nice little find from Dexter as well, so recovering what they can, but... With the loss bonus of 2,400 available, I'm doing the quick mental maths. There's uh, not going to be 4,750 available for anybody there, right? So uh, that's going to be a rough one. Unless Frozen can find a kill, that's, that's, that's the only way. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if that comes through. But uh, for now, that's going to be saving the, the rifles they've found. I just had an idea. Okay. What if what if this was, was possible in Counter-Strike? Now, this is crazy, right? And I never usually think of new ideas. So just bear with me on this one. But what if you could sell what you had equipped on your person back, and then you would get the cash. What, to some sort of merchant, perhaps? Y yeah. You could sell your grenades back to him, or the defuse Yeah, so kit. like Frozen right now, if he really wanted to get towards an AWP, he could sell the defuse kit for 400 bucks and okay. then buy the AWP. Like, that, that's an interesting kind of I concept. I guess once you've used it, though, there are no refunds. That's the problem. Okay, all right. If you take it out to the with... battlefield, you, you've run through smoke, you've run through dirt oh, and mud, see. you know, like, yeah, it's, you, you're not gonna be able to sell that again. What if you get 75% of the value? Okay, now you're talking. Now I could be now I could be interested. Yeah. Crazy idea, everybody. I'm sorry <laughs> that I even suggested it, but no. yeah, be careful with those ideas. You never know who's listening.
Um, but here we go then. No AWP, as Chad mentioned. We have got the five rifle array for Mouseport. But three rounds in a row for Astralis after being 6 0 down. They're right back in this one. They've got the Orb of Farley and building up their bank as well. 7K and a few players here as they set up the outside smokes. They haven't necessarily had to use too many of them. Lots of fakes and funny business going on towards the side of the map. And uh, we'll see what they can make of round number 10 here. So the smoke's going down. Difficult for them to stop them gaining access towards the secret area. They can, of course, spam the smokes, but uh, timings often elude them. Frozen with a chance. He's lining up the crosshair here. Doesn't pull the trigger just yet, but oh. through the smoke, he does find Glaive. That's perfectly done. Nice follow-up grenade as well. Does a boatload of damage. You can see that there before that smoke plumes. He steps out just to get his bearings. Let's get the lineup. And just unloads. He still has 14 bullets, and we'll make that nine now. But they have lost Glaive, an opening kill in the favor of Mouse here, but down towards the lower they head, and it's one man they have to get past Dexter. An AK and a flash, so no utility to stop them here. He is hoping they creep into his domain. This isn't an active position. He's actually going to allow them to cross over towards the double doors and the window side. Yeah, it's a really awkward angle to clear out. If they stick together, surely he gets most at uh, one, but there's going to be Convict takes their first contact, makes light work of him, and uh, could be a difficult one to even justify the retake here. They've got no presence towards lower blame map. There it is, uh, the famous flank, stopping anyone getting down towards the vents, but it is traded out on JDC. That's oh, a great frag. Sloppy. That's yet the man advantage here. Zipex will answer back. Really coming online now, as uh, this is possible. Certainly worth going for it. They've got the kip. All important frag here from Farley, absolutely nails it all day long. Call it off now. It's really not worth it for Frozen. Frozen probably getting a bit frustrated. The fact they've lost so many. Wants one of these moments and he just goes and touches the bomb. Suppose you never know. Gets himself off it and now they really have to check. So that confirms it. That was his opportunity. If he gets that kill, maybe there's a chance. But uh, ultimately, will be Farley coming out on top? Drops the AWP and it will be the fourth round. Oh, he's lost it. Where did my orb go? He couldn't find it. Could where he? did I put my orb? I have that problem every day. You know, as I'm leaving to come in here, the castle. Oh, where did I leave my bloody orb? Well, uh, it's a mystery at this stage. Marley will have to make do with just the rifle, but still, he got two frags towards the end there. They got the job done. Uh, presumably, going to be a weaker buy from our sports. Maybe for the best, you don't have the AWP. Just a chance to lose it, perhaps. As uh, we got a partial buy from our sports. I said they were baited breath. They have brought an M4 to the party couple of uh, de Desert Eagles and an MP9. So enough to win it, perhaps. But uh, Torshi keeping things light, trying to get the sniper out himself into round number 12. So it's four in a row for Astralis. JDC, awkward position, could be flashed in. Blame F aware of it. Not looking too comfortable there, I'd say. Might want to consider falling back, but uh, JDC, same mentality. Gets himself back into the round. I think he's aware of what happened to him last time. Yeah. And uh, JDC rumbled him a bit with that push towards the radio. So Glaive just setting up this smoke that's going to obscure the vision for the top side players towards that vent drop down. See this one here. Perfect little bounce is the boost. I'd like to see this. Heads up Counter-Strike. Thurston cool needs his to stand. And how much are they going to spot before they creep through? A nice little angle taken, and they cannot dish the lethal blow, but Sertion will get one kill and a lot of damage. So this is a great little use of the M4 here. Yeah, this is looking winnable now. They've got the first kill. Basically removes Zipex from the round as well. Spotted Config's presence towards the ramp, but he often likes to take matters into his own hands, Chad. And will he detect Frozen? He's waiting very patiently, looking to pounce. There it is, there's his moment. The MP9 at close range will always come out on top. Perfectly played, but still danger afoot. Glaive makes his presence known towards the upper bomb site. Smoke's deployed as well. CT's waiting patiently towards heaven here. If the bomb goes down, maybe give the advantage towards Astralis, especially if that kill coming through. Glaive is playing like a beast up here. JDC brings it back to a two versus one. Now, this is looking incredibly difficult for Zipex. Five points as health, as mentioned. No utility to speak of, just has to duck and weave, and the timings actually look pretty decent for him. Whoa. There's the first kill, a real chance here now. We'll have to be perfect on the final kill. Can he outmaneuver JDC? <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> a very good effort, it has to be said, Chad. He's come online in the last few rounds. Yeah, yeah look, he, he hasn't had a, a lot of frags so far, but the ones he've had have been very tidy indeed. That would have been some clutch. 5 HP and almost makes Mao's work. That was a, a very good attempt, all things considered. But you, you love this from, from Exertion, right? On the boost, they're finding a lot of impact and damage. Absolutely. Or Dexter getting found out in the smoke again. Frozen with a laser beam on the MP9 for two kills. But Zip, just the way that he was positioning himself, you know, he understood he couldn't open himself up to too many angles. A very close attempt. Wave not looking too impressed with the things out in the clutch. So, what have we got in store here? No nice. 
available for the T side, but Torshi getting down towards vents. Oh, did they miss one of the smokes here? Normally you want to smoke on top of your own molly to guarantee the wall, regardless they're down. And Torshi is too. AWP searching. One's already passed the line of sight. They almost line up, but Config with the trade. They will lose Farley. It's all right, he was pretty low already. Yeah, exactly, out of the two, you probably choose to lose him, but uh, you definitely don't want that. Config oversteps the mark alone. And back towards ramping, yeah, I dare say Rosen will That's make light work of that. That's a play, though, because the thing is, the JDC is towards lower. Blame goes, I have this space, I'm going to take it. He's not ready for Frozen's position, so Mao's starting to think on their feet here. Yeah, very good. Still a chance here for Zipex and Glaive. The experience will have to shine through. If they're standing any sort of chance here, less than a minute on the clock, but they do have the bomb. And that... Uh, what of course is going to be towards ramp room but uh, what can they really do with this one they do have a smoke some flashbangs but finding multiple kills heading down towards lower is it going to happen i doubt it they need to get a pick earlier this is where it could start but unfortunately he's giving it up frozen another very key defensive position drops the bomb yeah you, you can see where he found the first fight and then he drops back to play this passively they weren't even defending the b-bomb side realistically you, you can see a player towards the lower side of things of jdc but he was searching elsewhere he's actually yeah. just scooped up the awp from torji so i think they're aware that astralis wouldn't try and take that space with two players noted now it's just about zip going down before the round transpires and he will exertion he's looking much better this map he, he had a rough goal things on inferno now look the, the new lad in the in the mouse main team jersey we you know the academy story you guys have already heard that to death but uh, second map he's looked very good and uh, we get into round number 13 here we go eight to four for mouse sports faster approach and two players towards silo glaive's had enough he is sending it all the way towards main entrance held off by the incendiary it will be torsion to open things up though things falling apart here as he continues to apply pressure with the awp five on three well positioned to find the third as well but glaive tucks himself in he has to be the linchpin of the operation now, but they detect him. This is perfectly played from Mouse Sports. Flame F will find one, but uh, Torshi there to pick up the pieces once again. Might be the smoke, fires up a shot. And once again, Flame F, Zipex, just down towards lower, hoping for the best here. Can they get anything done? Flame F knows he needs to find at least a pick before they can plant. Can they do anything with it? Well, if Flame's going to have a round, it'll be about time here. Four rounds down. Flash is no good. It actually works against Exertion there, but Blame, he's going to stumble, and Torji steps out from the top ramp. The old pips zip, and that is going to be the ninth. Great recovery here. We had uh, six rounds out the gate, four on the trot back from Astras, and now three more consecutive rounds for Mouse to bring them up to nine with that defuse coming through. And JDC with 15, 12 on Frozen, 11 for Exertion, eight for Torji, and Dex there with that swing to clear. Glaive gets himself up to five. But this is great work, right? When you know that they've gone for this strategy, you see them jump around the... Wow. Wow. Very nice. Okay, you see them come around the unbreakable box. You know that that space is lost. So Dexter with a very unselfish clear, right? He leaves his position. He makes sure that there's nobody able to scoop up towards heaven. And uh, now they actually have quite a commanding lead. Astralis scraping the bottom of the barrel. The plant's good. The Tech Nines are out again. They've left enough money for a buy for the so final round of play as well. We were predicting some sort of like set piece with this sort of mentality before, but then it was config. They got a double kill, but they are shut down early here. Can Glade pull it back? He has been combative to say the very least, finding kills when required. Back to a four and four, not the end of the world just yet. They actually might even have a slight advantage here. Is the AK gone? How's it gone? It's in the in the gap. I'm gonna fly uh, over there and oh, okay, he's found it. That oh man, if I would have been stuck enough, there, no. I would have been tilty G. Well, for now, they've managed to find somewhat of a look into the round. They started with two tech nines, now a four and four with just one. So looking much better for them. Still a minute ten on the clock, some outside smokes, more of a fake, I suppose. Okay, well they haven't dropped the warehouse smoke as part of the L block here, which is actually okay because so nobody's that, playing. Right? Yeah, that deep. So they will have to respect it regardless. It's version on the site with Frozen up in the heavens, and he's actually going to drop down. So the Biff on A, here comes the play. Molly 4 behind the vent. The Flash is 2. Nobody blind just yet. Frozen tucking tail, letting Exertion take the first contact here, and he will, but they know both are there. Frozen swings out. You can only go one for one on each, but Torji, he's here to save the day once more. Farley, what are you going to do, my son? Yeah, the Tech 9 in hand, 30 seconds. He knows there's a sniper towards heaven. No idea where JDC could be either. He needs to find a rifle. If the bomb in his back, which he has done, but needs to reload on the M4. Stick with the Tech 9 for now, hoping to lock horns in the lobby here. If he gets a close range battle, the Tech 9 could come out on top, but JDC looks to have his number. As soon as he comes around, he will be dead. There we have it. It's going to be double digits from Mouse Sports in their CT campaign. 
Once again, Chad, they're looking very solid towards that upper bomb side. Yeah, and, and this doesn't feel like yesterday with the Astralis matchup. Yesterday versus the Astralis uh, complexity game, it yeah. turned into a bit of a clown fiesta with, with certain sure. rounds. Here, this is fantastic work from Maus. I don't think Astralis have made too many blunders. No, I don't think so. I just think right now Maus are playing better on the CT side of Nuke. Uh, and, and we've already mentioned that the CT side of Nuke was a problem for Astralis, so we know overnight they would have tried to button this up, expecting better from themselves. Let's see if they can get to the magic number of five here. Five will do. They're gonna pressure ramp here. Well, nothing else is working so far. Upper bomb side is completely locked down, but JDC, he's been pretty impressive as well. 16 kills. Oh, what a grenade. And they've already taken a casualty as well. The in-game leader removed. About 100 damage on that grenade. They're gonna have to go quickly towards the heaven position. Frozen might not be aware of it. Hasn't anticipated this quick maneuver, but does vault up towards heaven. Looking to deny access, and he's done that very well because they were hot on his heels. Yeah, the fact that he didn't have a second glance there over towards Hell actually saved his life. Yeah, right. so, so great work from Frozen, yeah. just not to be too curious. And they have a good idea. They've got them contained now towards this Hell position. Frozen will have to consider the jump around, and you can see him doing exactly that now as two now head back towards the lobby, two in Hell, and Still enough time for Astralis to pull this one off, but somebody from Maus will have to overstep the mark. They took so much damage from that grenade at the start. Glaive went down with nothing inflicted, and this is an opportunity. Great shot from Config once again, taking matters into his own hands. Gets in towards heaven. That's a key frag. Frozen removed. But towards up we go, and it's the tag team combo again. Exertion making light work of them. Dexter chiming in as well. Just two players remaining. 15 health between them, and at this stage, it looks like they might be done. This has been a very difficult half. Oh. Big and Farley chiming in here. There might be a slight chance. If you bring it down to a one versus one, get the bomb planted. Who knows what could happen? One more bullet will do it. Can he find it with the Glock? Config has, but it's going to be the slide <laughs> up the vent. Given the duties of protecting the upper bomb side, trying to spray them down and come out the squeaky door. JDC heading in that position, and we'll see if Glaive can stop them. There's actually an outside approach here as well. One smoke deployed and trying to cross over towards Secret, but Blame, he's probably got something to say about that. First oh. shot is an absolute beauty. Woof. That's what you want to see. One click of the mouse and one body hits the deck. It's Torji. Nemesis towards this yard position. And we do see the proceedings continue. And Glaive, we go. Wow, he's going to take one as well. This little lurky smoke towards the front of main. It's not really causing too many issues whatsoever for Astralis. The two-man advantage here. It's their round to lose. Yeah. And uh, stranger things have happened, let me tell you. Even in this group alone. Here we go, we're off. Farley goes down, nice shot from the P250. Plenty of time remaining and a defensive hold from Astralis. who way back in CT spawn, they're not challenging outside whatsoever. So Farley going down doesn't weaken a whole lot here. They still have bodies exactly where they need them. Something uh, with blame here. You've also got zip over towards ramp. Config is going to be coming up secret momentarily, and Glaive is still the man locking down this A site with the Julies. They're patrolling, looking for the blind spot, and they will have found that Blame identifies, and that thrusts them in towards A. The rotation is coming. Config has just come up secret, so boxed in towards this top side. Great shot from JDC, but Glaive, remember, he's still alive. An absolute nuisance right here. The in-game leader won't get anything else done, but they're very low on HP and just Come running on. out of time. Oh, and the bomb, the if bomb. He, yeah, if he had the bomb, this would be... Come on, pick it up. Let's go. Down. JDC Let's go. hiding through the bullets, and oh, oh, that'll be it. Config gets two kills at the end of it. Picks up the P250, and uh, in, at this juncture, let's paint the, the, the broader picture. Let's go a little bit Bob Ross here, right? So we're going to have to come through with, with some nice, gentle strokes against the Force by all the full eco. <laughs> and uh, as they move forward into... To, uh, what a, that's a lovely shot, isn't it? Into uh, what is going to be the meat and potatoes of this painting. It'll be the first gun round. If they can secure that, they force Mal back into another low buy situation. So uh, the next four rounds are going to be extremely telling for how uh, close Astralis can really draw this map. It will be the force. The yes. Use, tech 9 and a Mac 10. Very important round here. It has to be said. Astralis can't afford to give this one up, and it's going to be the scout of Farley patrolling towards the silo for now. An outside push is deployed from Mouse Sports here, trying to get over towards Secret. That should be a kill, not quite. Doesn't connect the shots there. An opportunity now a couple of times over, but uh, no damage inflicted. Three players down towards Secret. The rotations have to come through, and they will in the form of Glaives oh, with the pushing. M4. Pushing. This is very aggressive position. Needs at least two. Oh, oh he goes one better, Chad. He gets three, finds the bomb as well. Well, that's what you want. If you're going to get aggressive, show us why you've got a bit of a hot head, and that is perfect from Glaive. Three massive kills, the impact on the pistol. Now against the four spy. That's profit right there. Yeah, that's huge. Well done to Glaive. 
So many players would just panic spam after the first sure, there. Sure, he stayed very calm and controlled. That's absolutely true. But uh, Frozen, known to cause damage in these sort of scenarios. Got quite the deadly deagle on him, I would say. Towards Vents and Config knows it. Needs to be careful here, but uh, always up for a fight is Christian. He will come out on top. Nice work. Four players survived. That's all they had to do there, Chad. And now the campaign really is on. They've got a chance of pulling this back. That's a great round from Glaive. You yeah, know, right there. And, and it's such a stressful moment uh, when those three fights are coming his direction. He doesn't know exactly how many. The first is great poise for the second. And then the, the adjustment for the third. Really good work right there. Maybe some head armor against him could have caused a, a, a I was going to say, only the first player had a helmet. So that's where he got a little bit fortunate, I suppose. Didn't have to waste time dinking them to get the follow-up shot. Could just operate quickly. But either way, very, very nice. Well played to Glaive, and they're up against what should be an eco here. And uh, the first kill, well, there it is, easy to like. The bomb goes down, a ton of damage towards the hut. They're making light work of them here. Just two players remaining, that's, well, just one now, JDC towards the huts. And uh, this will be coming to its logical conclusion any second now. It took a bit of a labored spray, but they got that. And this is the difference between yesterday with the complexity game. When they had that Glock round where JD, uh, JT sorry, ended yes. up picking up an M4 and got three kills unarmored with an M4, and it was a one-on-one. -on -one. And that's a one-on-one, -on -one, you're right. And yep. then that, that followed them through, that bad smell. It followed them through the rest of the half, and it made it very difficult for them to get the buy going. So those two rounds being a bit more of the spotless variety is great news going forward. Finally, we'll bring out the AWP, but there's residual cash for all other four members of the Danish powerhouse. Well, here we go then, off to the races. We have the full gun round here. Farley and Torji equipped with the sniper rifles. We'll see a bombardment of HEs towards outside. Light damage inflicted towards exertion and playing on the front foot. Glaive and Blame F, the brains of the operation, trying to make the first incision here. Oh, oh. it's a beautiful shot, Glaive. He sneaks away through the smoke as well. That's very well done. Blame's still there to pick up the pieces. They might not be anticipating a second player in this spot. Oh, they're definitely not. That's really, really well played. Astralis now coming to life here on Nuke. This is why they chose the map. You can see an overwhelming force here. A lovely first round gambit there. Potentially sacrificing one player on the aggressive play, but uh, gets the kill, sneaks away. They've got a five on two. The only thing they're truly susceptible to in that moment is a top rush, right? Because they have so many forces towards outside. They had Farley there to help oversee business with that aggressive CT maneuver. And they made the right call because of how default heavy Mao's are. Well, the default on a map like Nuke is to get this yard control to try and get some secret or warehouse space while leaving a lobby linger. And now it's just going to be two looking for anything they can. I think Dex is probably wishing the clock wasn't at 43 seconds right now and they could just save because I don't think Astralis are going to give them a whole lot. Well, Farley will certainly take some life away. That's going to be a five on one now for Frozen. This outside play. I think that was perfect with Stratus. What a great call with this. The first gun round, you know they're going to be coming in with maybe a default, just exploring their options, and you've sent two of your strongest players out there to completely cause havoc, and it, it works out very well. Didn't even take any damage there. This can get worse for Frozen. Zip heard the footstep. I know there's only 16 seconds left, but Glaze okay, up on the roof. They're coming in, aren't they? If they move now, they're going to be too far away unless they start running now, right? There's not enough time. But if they take this gun away after time, that would be absolute worst case scenario for Frozen and Mouse here. They are, they're starting to get a move on, here starting to get a wiggle on here. They're pushing, they're fast, they flash one another, but... About three just, seconds. Hold on, just hide around the corner. Three, two, one, all good. Oh! oh he did survive, all good, all good. So, Wolf. doesn't get any extra cash, but saves the, the AK, crazy, the this. armor. Really nice play. Glaive is not going down without a fight, is he? And then, like we said, as he fell back, he didn't anticipate the second player to be out there. Farley with the Easy shot towards Dexter there, five on two. They don't deny the AK from Frozen. So still with quite a lot to work with here. That's going to be now four rounds in a row for Astralis. 11 to eight overall on their CT side. As Blame ready to fight once more. Is there another smoke available for the cross? There is. He's going to throw in his own volition here, Exertion. You can see, oh, no, he's not. I thought he would lob it out for himself so he could take the space on his own timing. We'll have to extinguish, so it gets deployed regardless. And a chunk of damage being done, but they will get their way down secret. This first smoke, not going to fade any moment. The second, however, plenty of time for Torji to make his way. Well, let's see what can be done. Nice exchange. Frozen controls the spray well. And down towards lower, we will head. This time, it's up to Config to defend. Blave showed us what can be done with the M4 in this position. Can he replicate it? Same position, same spot, oversteps the mark and gets just one here. Not quite as clean there, Chad. Oh, and this is a booby trap round, right? This is a round that you should be converting a couple of upgrades in a saved AK. And now you find yourself on the back foot. Somebody needs to step up and it won't be Zip. He's put in a body bag, thrown away. It's Farley that'll negate any of this pressure, but the man Both that- Both downs was lower. Yeah, that's the problem. Up they head. 
What they had, yeah, they do. Torji will eventually make it. And now, Glaive, the fact that he's coming behind a vent that Torji's just come up, maybe they won't consider this with the quickness. I don't think they're even going for it. Do they, do they, I don't think they know which side it is. Definitely not lower. And uh, Farley confirms he'll be going back towards CT spawn. So well done to Mouseport. That's a saved AK and some pistols. Yeah, this is where we, we were just praising them for keeping it clean, Astralis. This is one that is going to come back or could come back to haunt them here. Thankfully, they've got a lot of cash, but that was just an outside jewel from Frozen. Couldn't believe his luck. He was uh, presented quite a clean one there. And uh, I believe that's towards Blame F. So there we have it. It was down to Config to try and find multiple kills. Same position, same scenario up against Tech Nines. Different player. Couldn't replicate that calm form of Glaive. Kind of started spamming bullets, bullets preemptively, hoping they would run into the spray, but anything but. They waited until they had to uh, reset, and uh, it all gets very hairy indeed. And there's Blame F going down to the nice shot. And this is the moment. those are the bullets coming through, and he's just waiting for him to reset. At that point, you swing together, only can get one. Ali with a decent frag, but didn't have much of a knock on effect there. So, Mouse Sports steal one away, 12 to 8. Looking to take us to Ancient if possible. Exertion has only bought a smoke here, and he has 1,400, so uh, he might be moving a little bit quicker in a round like this. Through the flames, they're going to weather the storm and aggressive again. It's flames being spotted. Not plucked lied. out of the sky. Very fortunate to have dodged that shot, and the nade back will send them packing. Wow. He's very lucky to be alive here, Blame. I thought the AK would happen if the orb didn't, but uh, either way, he is away. We'll see what happens here. Outside control granted. And Glaive through the smoke continues his good form on the CT oh. side. Does he ever? That's a double kill through towards main. And now a five on three. Dexter trying to pick up the pieces. Can he salvage this one? Maybe even pushes the smoke here. They're in desperate situation. Might just have to take a deep breath. He'll wait for it to fade either way. And uh, we'll still continue the assault towards upper. Config repositions. Glaive might be caught out here. Doesn't anticipate it. And there it is. Dexter does indeed find the kill back. Still feels very difficult now, JDC and Dexter, especially the latter, very low on HP here, and not a whole lot of space to work with. These were the type of rounds yesterday, the complexity were able to pull out of their ass. Now, I don't think this will be the case for Mouse. This barrel will be spotted. Yep, hello, I will take that kill. Thank you very much, says Farley. And as long as he just sits back, he should have the second great shot there onto JDC. And now, uh, well, going to have to stomach another loss here. They were able to pick up a round with not a whole exactly. lot. Exactly. So at least that's going to fill you with a bit of confidence. It's just about finding that traction across the secret again. So now that they have the full guns, how do they make sure they account for blame this time? Well, just oh, take a look at this shadow. one. Yeah, he did it from the main entrance and uh, a double kill as well. Exertion trying to answer back. Ali secures the round, though, with this lovely little sequence. USB kill comes through and uh, finishes things off towards Squeaky Door. Frozen a bit frustrated there, as you can see. After a great win yesterday, that's his hurrah going. Okay, well, what's going to be the difference maker for Maus here? Astralis is still back on the comeback trail, but it feels like they're starting to grab some control. The orb springs into action towards ramp. Perfect time to deploy this boost. Yeah, it frees up Farley a lot here as well. He doesn't have to cheat up and help zip as much. Yeah. Right? When you have this boost up, this player should get one, right? You just need the one kill here. That's all he needs, you're right. With the AK-47 as well, your DPS, super high. You can get a lot of damage out very quickly, and it's difficult to clear it uh, effectively. You can't really flash a position. You can't Molotov it. That's an interesting note with the door being blown open towards lower. I think that's going to allow the rotation down to, to have a bit more action when they take that window side. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep tabs on that. Full spot from the OBS team as we do get the L block smoke wall deployed here for Mao. So a different variation, a different pace. And you can see how diligent Exertion's having to be after these aggressive maneuvers. But Blame this time, he's decided to roost in the warehouse position. Now there's flashes to clear this. It's going to be tight. Blame F tucked in. Glaive pushing towards lobby. Does find JDC, but Exertion looks like he's clearing every single angle. No lazy beaks here, and there it is. That's a lovely shot. You're right. Config, though, once again, overstepping the mark. Does get one frag, but maybe that's not going to be enough here. That door was blown open for this purpose, and they weren't anticipating it. Great kill from Frozen, though. Back to a two-on-two -two and Exertion. He's got heaven control, but that's going to be the bomb removed, and no quick kill there from Exertion. 25 seconds remaining. He needs to scoop up the bomb. He's in a two versus one. Nice flashbang to delay him. Offers one up in kind and right tries to get vent. down towards lower, oh. but he takes a load of damage now. He really is up against it. And Zipex, he'll be he's ready for this. He's got he a can, molly. Yeah, he can just take him down, though, I would say. Oh, Zipex. Doesn't take the wide angle, molly you're right. Will. Yeah. Nice work. 
Good yeah, job. It looked a little bit sweaty for a second, didn't it? If Zip goes down, uh-oh. Yeah, <laughs> that, that would have been a massive clutch from Exertion there. But uh, it's only a two-round game now. And, and Mouse, they've only been able to post one round so far on this T-Hall. Right. And that's the thing. So that round, with Glaive finding the opening pick, Glaive's impact in the second half is insane. It's off the charts right now. He has 18 kills. He really had enough, didn't he? He's like, you know what? I'm going to start winning this game for us, and uh, I'm going to be pushing every position on the map. Outside, squeaky door, ramp. I don't mind. I'll find the kills if required. And uh, Zipix, yeah, maybe could have fallen apart there, but the incendiary pretty much guaranteed his chances. And another partial buy here. Can they find success once again? Replicate the only round victory as Estratus close the gap and find double digits 12 to 10. It is actually crazy that the difference in that moment. Uh oh, hold up, Zip, hold up. They're coming through the flames. Yes. You're going to have to get a couple of kills here, and he will. The extinguisher eventually comes through, but that's going to work against them. They've yeah, exactly. created a wall of their own. Say thank you very much. I needed that. Things are getting a little bit uncomfortable there. Should be a kill for Glade, but he's been spotted. Exertion will get the one tap on him. A couple of bullets, in fact, but still, same result. And towards how they go. A lot of noise being made. Config won't be missing that at all. And Dexter with the Galil just has to sneak through the smoke here. Hope for the best. Not going to happen. I just want to go to the previous round as well. The difference coming into the round we've just seen unfold here. If Exertion was allowed to get the bomb down, that's the difference between a buy or the partial that we True. just saw, right? Yep. So a, a real difference maker. And I know that people think, you know, you're talking about the money a lot, but that really does impact in the type of buys, the utility available, the strategies available here. So the fact that uh, Astralis have made it so in all of these rounds bar one on the CT side, there's been no plans for mouse, right? So, so they're limiting the amount of gun rounds and attempts they can have at really breaking through. So a full buy here now for mouse sports. Now we did notice that against the set what pieces, boost? oh, that's actually really nice. Against the set pieces and faster plays towards up, but that's where Astralis was struggling. They didn't seem to have a response for very effective flashbangs and JDC, where's that? Towards- Oh, main, it must be. Key. Oh yeah, through main, you're right. Damn, okay. And Zipex will oh, get very close to finding the kill on Dexter there. Unfortunate. And uh, he actually might force the issue here. A couple more shots would do it. The HE won't be quite enough, oh. I don't think. <laughs> Pretty much max damage, but uh, lands at his feet. And he gets away just about that. I feel like he should have at least been given that one by the gift of the gods there. He, he played that very well. The smoke yeah. on the fade. He throws the Molotov over towards the lobby. It takes the fight. Oh, he has to, and he's actually going to be ahead of this smoke wall. I I'm not sure if they're ready for this. It's just about the timing of Config's peak here. 25 kills to the name. The Berserker steps out, and Torji eats dirt. Plenty more coming his way, and can there be support? Well, the flashes are coming over. That'll initiate Config more. He's going to get two, maybe more than he was worth in that scenario. Now it's a three on three. Exertion's going to have heard this drop. Yeah, absolutely true. Trying to work out where Glaive is positioned. He tucks himself back in towards main entrance as the smoke dissipates here, and Zipex. They can full control the fact he knows he's done damage towards ramp, and the players have likely fallen back. Great oh, shot. shot. That's what he needed to hear. Now the round back in Astralis' favor. Exertion, low. Dex even more so. Six HP, been given the AWP. And uh, we are running out of time. 20 seconds remaining, and Dex is all the way down towards lower with the bomb on his back. All right, well, he's going to have to get through Zip, who doesn't only have 11 kills, but just hit a sharp one. And he can finish off Dexter at least, and uh, now he's sure he will. Post it up top of the site, the smoke, the spam, oh, the knife. I don't think I've ever seen Zip go for a knife before. I love it. Why not? That's perfectly played. He knows he had no chance to really do anything about it. And that was the original player as well. He damaged. So he's going to be happy to finish the job with the knife as that well. That is fantastic. Well, now it's a level game. 12-12. Again, no plant. Max loss bonus. An opportunity to at least get something that resembles a buy through. It's looking very good. Now, this was the opener. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, wonder, no wonder we missed it because JDC definitely didn't see anything. Hard to have the premonition there, but I uh, love this from Zip. It's got a bit of sass to it, a bit of style. Letting them know how it feels. Feeling the heat and the pressure rise now on the Mouse Sports camp, looking down the barrel of a 2-0. They will buy up into the next, but uh, Galil's and AK's bare bones utility, Dexter with nothing. As uh, uh, it's all to play for now, Astralis could take the lead after an 11-4 deficit. They're managing to get right back into this. Yeah, it looks like there's a bit of a stall out right now. Wait for the protocol utility, which is starting to subside. You see another smoke get lobbed down to secure the squeaky door. Once a lot of these smokes and mollies have been flushed through, you expect some presence towards Yard, and well, it's a feign. The smokes is the only thing really to offer, and towards ramp they go. Zip's going to be really He's tested here. There, say. He's fighting. He's standing. He's delivering. A bit more of a defensive Molotov and Config's rotated it's the Wombo combo on ramp. JDC is the only one to strike blood here for Mouse, and he's going to be found out as well. They're out of ideas, Mouse. Wow. Well, they chose the tightest choke point possible. They have to extinguish the Molotov once again. And yeah, 
Zipex has every right to stay with Config backing him up as well. A lot of damage output there. Only one player going down, and it's a four versus one. Astralis will take the lead. They've clawed their way all the way back from the 11-4, and now we'll have a 13-12 advantage. I just want to say that CT side looks completely different for Astralis today. And and obviously there's play styles that are different. We haven't seen somebody from Mao's flirting with the idea of getting down the vent every round. Right. That means the CT setup can be different for Astralis. Clearly an issue that they were uh, we could highlight in the server. But today it's looked like a completely different team. There haven't been people just walking off on their own in 5v3 number advantage situations, giving up fights. They've been a lot tighter. Glaive's been a lot more of an impact. And Config, Mr. Inconsistent. I know they had device on this team, Mr. Consistent. But if, if Config could find this form on... Let's just say, oh, he's ready for it. I was going to say, like, let's say he can have it in four out of five games or three out of five, three out of five, three out of five games of this config. That's yeah. a scary Astralis. Yeah, well, with 30 kills right now, uh, he really is in the zone. And his sides are just pistols, P50s and Deagles. These rounds are possible to win, but it's looking unlikely considering the form the Danes are showing right now. I think if you looked up the uh, dictionary definition of dismay, it'd just be <laughs> that face image. mouse here. So, uh, you can tell that this one is really starting to slip through the fingers. A 14th would be the certainty, but they're trying a similar round that profit them their only two round thus far. Four individuals slinking their way down the secret JDC to defend from lobby and blame. He's the man tasked this time round. It was Config who yeah. flubbed earlier. And we had uh, Glaive with three kills before. So yeah, just tagging each other out. Different position this time on the other staircase. Blame though. Looking good for maybe just one, unfortunately. Doesn't even get that. A dink comes through, and now that's where they'll capitalize. Zipex, though, has been a machine with the AK-47. He manages to stop the early plant, and they'll have to reconsider their options here. Back and towards the vents they go, and Config, he's sniffing them out here. Another unfortunate dink. He'll be going down as well. Three versus four, and uh -oh. here it is. We're off. Don't buy guns, just the pistols, apparently. Farley, you're going to have to do a lot more. One is good, but you need to buy some time for Zip here. He is not in the position for this type of a fight. As the nade lands, finally has to reconsider his options. Another one of the toes as he just continues shooting off pot shots at Zip. He really needs to step up in a moment like this to lose a round to pistols again to Mouse. This one is going to sting. Yeah, it's the same sort of round they gave it before, a partial buy. They're going to save again. Might have to. We'll see. Blows off the door, throws the incendiary towards Squeaky, hoping he'll flush someone out, but no one is there to receive. Yeah, you see towards the hut. Off angle as well. Difficult to clear this one out. We'll find it, but it takes too much damage. That might call it there. And it will be 13-13 with just the pistols once again. Now Sports managed to come out on top. And you're right, maybe just stick with the pistols, it seems. Yeah. Any rounds that are working. I think that the biggest drama now is the mind games of the next few, right? Where are the tail end, where the business end? There's absolutely no doubt about 13-13 all tied up over time. It's even extremely likely in a scenario like this, but the mind games become, do Maus want to continue with this type of a play? If that is the case, how do Astralis respond? If they want to fake this type of a play, where do they think the weakness will come from? Where does Dexter think that Glaive will send the extra troops and remove a little bit of power over towards ramp, the top side? You, you have to be questioning exactly how Astralis are going to move around the map here. Still anyone's game. Maus Sports back in it now with that second round picked up, 13-13. We go through the motions once again. The outside smoke's deployed. Grenades are exchanged and exertion. He actually gets in front of the smoke here. Blame F towards the garage once again. That's got some backup for main entrance. That's in the form of Glaive. That's uh, removing vision and inflicting damage. Glaive is surely going down here. Well, it doesn't quite connect, but uh, they've sent him packing towards the upper bomb side. And lucky to get away there. Uh, Blame got pipped to the post when he was playing this position last time. So, again, secret control garnered. Exertion is just going to hang in yard behind the T-Red and allow his teammates to work. Zip, tasked with the lower side of things, is going to nade open the door. A good timing because they haven't really taken too much control down towards lower just yet. But who's going to be the next rotation point? Config is a ramp. He can assist. He's going to have to be the next man to back up Zip towards B. Yeah, this is a cool idea. You can disallow entrance towards the window room. They can't really get that full control they used to. So I do like that idea of nading at the door, and you can see them being a little bit more active on the CT side here, losing some information. A key interaction here, JDC. Down he goes, Farley, taking matters into his own hands. I know that's the lobby prong. They've done their homework, so back up through secret. They can't blame still in this position. He's going to have a couple. That's back turn from exertion. Not expecting him here so late. And two for blame. Patience, it's a virtue, and you've seen it right there. Farley with the tag. Torji's low, and how do you go for this? In through main, the only option with 24 seconds on the clock. And Farley with another. 
Rosen's been silenced and Torji just wants to save. And if they take this one away after time, yeah. they deny this one right here, right now at this juncture of the game, it'll sting. Really well. Torji doesn't go towards T-Spawn as well, holding towards T-Red. Glaive, uh, I know this guy, he'll be checking this one. He won't let it go undetected, surely. And there were three seconds remaining. I dare say they've got him. There after it is. Time. And after time, indeed, Torshi will be left with zero dollars going into the next round. That one stings. Even after winning the partial by Dexter, just to know 6,300. So he could drop a, a little, perhaps, but that's about as good he as he bought an orb. Oh, he just straight up sent it, did he? He already down to a deagle himself, I'd imagine. Wow. I can't 50. believe that. That's, this is a shot from Farley. It was a big end. Bang. Through the corner of the vent yes. right there on the Frozen. Trying to do everything can to avoid uh, from Dexter. Yeah, I, I, I don't love it. Obviously, really? Torshi can't buy armor as well, right? Yeah. So you're putting a lot into uh, your sniper there who has to deliver. Well, we better deliver then. And uh, Frozen's already delivered. We are back in the game. Our apologies again. So uh, there it is. The orb's going to strike. Torshi, you had to step up. You needed to get it done. Dexter put his faith in you, and they're going to deliver on all fronts. Frozen. JDC and Torji providing something here. We should be tied up again, 14-14, unless Glaive and Config have something to say. And Glaive replicate the three-piece he got before. He'll have players in front of him. He was very good on this angle. They'll face check it, do considerable damage. He needs to reposition. He swings out towards the Orpa. Torji will take care of him, even without the armor. He seems to be perfectly fine. Config left in a four versus one. Down he goes. He kind of fancies it, but looks at things. And uh, unfortunately for him, his days are numbered, 14-14. And uh, it seems like it was the right choice. Torshi getting two frags there. Yeah, well, they know they can't crack through, right? This is what Maus have, have at least come to terms with, right? They, they've been able to battle through the grief and now understanding that there's enough money for Astralis to buy in the next two rounds. So in the, in the next, it is only Config who's a little bit light on. He's got 850, but everybody else with residual cash for a purchase for Astralis. But uh, that opener onto Blame. That's how it all started. Blame's giving away a couple of bad deaths here yeah. as far as openers through smokes, getting spammed. Um, it all comes down to this. Blame F outside once again. Manol towards the garage, throws the initial grenade and holds towards May. It's deep incendiary of flash as well. He might be expecting a faster play, but through the flames, they're going to run exertion. He's taking so much damage here. Just a, a tight spam. If Blame could find the right location, that should have been him done, but not to be the case right now. And towards the lower side is Config. He had his struggles, the same as Blame did. It is really only Glaive who has passed this test, so they're going to bolster this defense with two players. But the issue is, can you stay static, or do you need to be a little bit more dynamic in this play? Yeah, they don't have to go down secret, as Sports said is. They, they've suggested they are going to a few times now. The smokes have been deployed, and we'll see what they make of it. No smokes remaining now, hoping that Torshi can crack things open, and Farleg's in CT spawn. Good position. He could get found oh! out here. He hits the shot, but it doesn't quite connect. That one will, and lots of damage being output now. Dexter down to nine. And Torshi at 18. Unfortunately, a leg shot there. Looked like it was dead on. He did very well there. It's a power position, especially with the smokes that came their way. But Farley, he's not afraid of nothing. Farley. Being very dangerous indeed. Living up to the namesake with the Reese Peak. And he's going to take down another. Farley, very active. This is what you want to see from your Orpa. Now he's just got to duck back and oh, wait for Config to come through and sweep up the mess. There's only two kills to find. JDC is the only healthy member. And I'm sure Torji is probably wanting to hold on to this now that he is the last man alive. And surely they don't do him again. Not again. He Can't needs him some twice cash, after lads. time. Let him keep it. 20 seconds remaining. The hunt is on. I dare say he will be going down. Farley. Farley. He doesn't care, does he? He's uh, full sending it every single round. So there it is. Series point for Astralis. Okay, well. well they had four of these yesterday, Chad, against oh, uh, complexity right. on Nuke. It seems to be the round that really eludes them. Well, strap yourself in then, I suppose. This was the missed shot to the leg. Well, it wasn't the missed shot to the leg. It was the shot to the leg that was missed to Miss the body. Kill. But the yeah. fact that he re straight away and then even pushes for this final frag, I love to see it from Farley. A little bit of uh, a little bit of pizzazz. Now, if ever there was a round to close things out up against three Galils and a Mac 10 you would assume this would be it. But it's never that simple, Chad. You know it. I know it. Astralis knows it. These Galils can be very tricky to deal with, especially down towards Secret, where they haven't been having much luck. Exertion gets down clean. No damage taken. Zipex... Playing on the front foot. This might be fantastic. Oh. Going to get multiple kills. He does a lot of damage there. About 200. Farley more than happy to challenge. Doesn't connect the shot. So down towards lower. They should go. I can't Good believe shot. he's re-picking this. Yeah. He's really got me on the edge of my seat right now. I'm but loving I'm loving it, it. Yeah. You need a bit of confidence here from Farley. He wants to close them right here, right now. He's had Let's enough go. of this. Yesterday, Astralis should have got it done 2-0 against Complexity. Today, they're riding the wrongs. Today, they're taking down Maus. Avenging Heroic, their arch nemesis. It's going to be Zershin, the new boy, a one-on-four. 
all the work to do. Australia, surely they've done enough here. You would think so, Chad. A four versus one, three kills for Farley. Call it done. Blame F should make light work of this final frag. Not quite. He does a load of damage here, but just a matter of time. 45 seconds, and the bomb is down in an awkward position. A smoke will be dropped, and uh, you have to say, Farley on Inferno. We said he was fantastic there, and he really stepped up once again on that CT side. Oh, I just have to sing his praises. Yesterday, since Dust2, he was doing a great job orping over towards that A side on the CT side. Here he's woken and up, but he out. might even get the last. The spot is there. Exertion, this is desperate now. You don't have any choices as Farley. He wants to drop down. He wants death from above, but it'll be glaive. They pick it up 16 to 